Welcome, welcome. It's Memorial Day weekend. And what we should all do on Memorial Day weekend is sneak away and do a little bit of sewing. So that's what we're gonna do. I don't think I ever sew for long periods. I, show, I sew a lot for very short intervals. And I find that, um, I don't know, my sewing, I feel like doing that, it's more precise. I think sometimes when you sit down and you've gotta get a project done, this is just what I've noticed with me over the years and having sewing deadlines versus just time when I'm sewing for myself and for fun, that I notice that if I'm trying to sew too much at one time, I'm just tired and I just don't do as well. So I'm gonna really encourage you to do shorter sessions, even if it's a couple times a day. You know, a lot of times I'll get up in the morning and just, you know, sew for an hour or whatever. And I think that just really has made a difference for me. So I'm just gonna pass that along. So happy Memorial Day weekend. We're glad you're here. And we're gonna sew the POM for May, which is Anne's top. Nothing new and different. Um, I just really wanted to sew it to show that, gosh, a little t-shirt like this is very simple to do and you can do it out of all kinds of different fabrics and changes and options and et cetera, et cetera. And then what I thought we'd do today is sew it on the serger, except for the hem. We're gonna sew the whole thing on the serger just to change it up a little bit. So we went ahead and we put the close-up cam is on the serger. I'm gonna to have to manipulate around it. So if you start you know, wiggling, you'll see that it's probably not you, it's probably the motion of the serger. So we're gonna do our best and see what we can do. But if you're ready, we put up um, a few new fabrics today. And this is one of the new fabrics. It's the, new, I don't know the number, but it's the last, the newest fabric up there. It's an ITY. Some of you, every once in a while, I'll get a comment that your sewing machine has a hard time stitching on an ITY, and I, you know, I'm definitely not a sewing machine person. I don't know why, but um, I really like this. It's gonna be really cute. The only thing I did different if, is I rounded the bottom. I've noticed in um, kind of for spring and summer, they're rounding the bottoms, and since this was a, a soft collar, I decided a rounded bottom would look really nice. I did the back a little longer than the front, so, just a couple changes, not a big deal. And I did an inch difference in the middle, longer than the sides, both front and back. I'm sorry, two inches longer in the back because I added three inches at the side for both front and back, four inches in the middle of the front, and five inches in the middle of the back. And then just rounded between the two. I just used my French curve to round that out. So we probably should answer any questions if you all have questions to start with. I always think it's good to kind of clear your brain and get those questions out of the way. So if you have any questions, we'll probably take a minute and just answer those. And then we're gonna so, so, so. Anything commit? No? Then you guys know it all. That sounds like a great deal. Okay, so we're gonna start, um, again, we've got the guide sheets up here. We're gonna start with the first column and we're just going column by column. So the very first column you see, we're gonna do the French darts and we're gonna do the shoulder seams. I think there's times where so many people say to me, um, they have a hard time getting a dart straight or even or whatever, try it on a serger. I, I know that sounds probably crazy, but I've, I've found that because if you just, a dart is a straight line and if you just line it up and you're gonna watch your left needle it's amazing how easy this is gonna be. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna line it up there with my left needle. Uh, the serger can sew, I guess what we call in the air, or a sewing machine can't. And so it's easy to start sewing and to line up that dart exactly as you want it lined up. Today we're just going to do everything on the serger. And I'm going to kind of try to show you a close-up of this so you can see that what that serger did is it just literally stitched it so straight it just picked it up right there and just brought it right in. Isn't that cool? So a serger is not a bad way to do a dart. Darts are not as exact as we probably think they are. So that's one side and I'm going to do the other side. And on mine, I, I don't mark the point because I've done it on for myself so many times. I, I know where it is, how far from the cut edge it is. 
So I just, I can put it under there and just kind of go. I've lost my pedal. Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> And just my three eighths mark is right here on my on this serger. I'm on a different serger today than what we've been. For many of you, when we've been in class, a lot of times when we do that French dart, it's really a nice effect to. Um, hollow out the middle to cur concave, concave the curve. So you can even do that on a serger, but it really um, brings it un under the bust in a little bit more and it gives, it separates a bust from um, a tummy. You know, we, we have them both, but, but if you curve in and make that, make that stitch concurve rather than straight, it really is nice. Okay, so those, that's my two. Now we're gonna go to the shoulder seam. And I just put my pieces in a pile here and we're going to do the shoulder seam. I love this fabric. It's just so pretty. One, nothing secret or difficult about a shoulder seam, that's for sure. All right, these guys are playing uh, popcorn over there. All right, next shoulder seam. I just got to get mine in under the wires so that I don't knock your camera. So that's column one. How hard was that? We should time this, except I hate to put a time to anything because I think it makes us enjoy the process a little bit less. So just at this point, what you've got is your darts in the front and then the back. And you can see where I rounded the bottom there, the back being a little bit longer than the front. All right, so the, in most cases, whenever you're sewing, the minute you've done, you've constructed a neckline, you want to finish the neck edge and that's being woven or knit it is um, you know curved it's at an angle it's not a straight line so therefore it's not as stable and you're going to it's going to have some stress so you're much better off to finish up that neck edge and before you do sleeves that's generally why the order is like it is so we'll go to the second column and you can see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the neck edge. I'm going to create the, co the collar. It's called. Alright, and then this is the center back seat. Easy enough. And then you can see in the next section what I'm doing. Is I'm going to fold that in half, wrong sides together, and I'm going to pin the open edges together to keep them the same. I moved my pins because I was afraid it might get in the way of the fabric. But Okay, so basically on here, I'm going to put four pins, and what I'm going to do is mark halfway and then put those two halves together and I'm going to mark quarter way and then I'll do the same to my neck edge and I'll just align them when in this particular pattern it's a one-to-one -one, so it's not like I'm stretching anything to anything but I still want to hit my quarter marks and I still want to hit my half marks just to make sure along the way nothing's going too majorly wrong remember I'm surging it and when I'm surging it you know that would 
be nice if I don't have to undo it. Okay, so there I've got my collar and it's in four pieces. So this particular top has a front, a back, a sleeve, and a collar. So like the one I have on is Anne's top and I made it in a v-neck and did the fold over. And I only used obviously the front, the back, and the sleeve. Um, you could use the front, the back, and the collar and make it sleeveless. And we have directions in there for doing that. Um, I just didn't, I just didn't, you know, I didn't do it with a sleeve. Okay, so why do you begin surging the dart at the bus point? Um, you know, you have more control. You have more control in getting right at the tip. When you start at the larger end, um, a lot of times when you're sewing, you're not getting right to the tip, and so you kind of make a correction while you're sewing that is so dramatic that the dart won't lay flat. So when you're sewing, if the two most, if you take the two points of the darts, being at the tip and the, the open end, and think about, okay, which is most important, it's the tip. That's what's everyone gonna see, that open end, no one's gonna see that, and it's gonna be buried in a seam anyway. So it's, just, it's logical that you start at that tip, the most important point, and that's where you're gonna start your sewing from. This is off topic regarding Giorgio's top. To increase the peplum, do you widen each side of all four pieces? Yes, yes, and there's more than four. Yeah, I guess, okay, four pieces, but you widen all both sides, yes, of all four. You said that, yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, what brand of serger do you use? This is a Viking and this is a baby lock. So Viking and baby lock is what I prefer. Was this pattern copied from a designer? Yes, um, but, and the name is Ann, but I don't remember. Um, Ann's top, Ann, I don't remember who Ann is. Sorry, it's been a lot of years. Do you put this, this is such a great classic top. I just love it, but mainly I love it. I said it Tuesday night when we were talking. Mainly I love it because it gives you a cowl effect, but it saves yardage. It does, you know, a lot of times when you're doing cowl, you're using up a lot of yardage to create that drape but this gives you that draped neckline with using minimal amounts of fabric. Did you put the serge seam allowance opposite directions when folding the collar to attach the neckline to reduce bulk? No, do not do that because how do you press it flat? If you do that, then no, it's not that much bulk. And you want it all to be the same way. In fact, when I folded that collar in half, I made sure that it was all done the same way. Don't don't opposite that seam at all. I'm glad somebody said that. I just probably, there's some things I probably do just by habit and don't even, you know, I don't mention them because I'm not aware of them. Okay, so this is the neck edge and I'm gonna take and find the center back and put a pin in there because that's where the seam is going to align. And then I'm gonna fold this neckline in half and then in quarters. So the one I have on, because I didn't do the collar, I did a, um, I took the French curve and did a V-neck, And but then when I did the fold over trim on it, I did the same thing. I quartered the fold over trim, quartered the neck edge, it's probably just a habit. And it's just a way to get it even. Again, this is a one-to-one. -one. You don't really have the same type uh, quartering that you really need to. The only reason I'm doing this is to really just make sure I'm on track per se. All right, and then I'm going to put right sides together. I lost my pin in my trash. I hate to throw away good pins. Oh well, we'll find it later. <laughs> okay, so I've got uh, my neck quartered, my collar quartered. We're just all quartered here. Because I want my shoulder seam allowance to go backwards, I'm gonna put a pin at the shoulder seam. I'm gonna pin it from the outside to the inside so I don't get confused that that's one of my quarter pins. It's just a pin that's there so that my sh when I get to that portion, if the shoulders, you know, if the bodice is down and the collar is up, it doesn't matter in this case which way it is, I wanna make sure that that seam, those shoulder seams get pushed to the back.
and then I put my collar on. I just lay my collar right over the top and line up that back seam. And I would be sure to only leave one pin when you're going around because if you leave more than that, you don't want to miss it in the serger. There have been times when I have hit my pin with my blade and it never feels good, it never sounds good. I'm sure we've done all done that at some point, but just be careful. So what I do to kind of keep track mentally of my pins is I make sure that they're all, that there's, you know, where I've got two pins coming together here, and I know you, I'm pinning on my lap so you can't really see what I'm doing, but I've got two pins coming together. I'm going to take one pin and secure the two pieces together. The other pin I'm going to take out so that I know that there's only one pin at each place if that makes sense. If you've never run over a pin on a serger, consider yourself lucky. Generally the pin does not survive. And it's a really nasty sound. And don't even try to listen to it because it really <laughs> ruins your blade is what it does. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. I'm all ready to hit the serger. At this point, if you want to, you could pin more often. This is an ITY, and it has a little bit of a, um, you know, it's very thin, it curls. So I'm actually going to take those shoulder seam pins and pin that together. Just again, just to make it a little simpler for me. Okay, I think we're ready to go. And we're just going to surge this all the way around. This seam being surged is really easy to handle because afterwards the next step, as you can see on that guide sheet, I'm going to um, run the third column, right? Yeah, we're, we're, let's go to the second column. Well, let's go to the second one first because we didn't have the second one up there. <laughs> so there's the second one. You can see that's where I did the collar together and then you fold it in half wrong sides together. We did that. Now let's go to the third column. And then this is where, this is what I'm doing now and I'm surging it all the way around. Notice in that bottom step, I'm going to understitch that seam on the sewing machine. I'm going to understitch it to the top. And so a serge seam is so easy to understitch it. I mean, not any seam is, but that serge seam holds both layers together, so it's easy to serge this section together. Okay, let's ask more questions. If I want more cowl look, how would you change the shape from a rectangle to more an angle at one edge? The neckline is going to, the neckline, not the collar, is going to determine what the shape looks like. So if you were to uh, make a v-neck, and then attach the collar. The collar is going to follow the neck, the shape of the neck edge. Okay, so if you make if you made it a V neck, and then put that same collar on it, but if the length of the collar and the neckline were the same, it would simply change the look and give it a more, ver, you know, visual look than more rounded. When you use fold over elastic on the neck, do you put it in a one to one ratio? Is the elastic a bit smaller? Elastic's a bit smaller. It depends on the fabric. I usually take away out of the whole neck edge. I usually take off an inch. That'll usually do it. It's not much. If I raise the neckline, do I keep the collar one to one, or will it be too tight? Watch Tuesday night's webcast. We made it smaller. We did. We did all the way to a turtleneck, and that has the answers in there for you. If I raise the neckline, do I keep the collar one to one, or extend the outer edge? So it's. Those are all style issues. So whatever you decide to do, you want to figure out what do I want, where am I going, and just so you know the rules and you can do that, okay? All right, collar up or down when you serge. It's a one-to-one, -one, so it makes absolutely no difference. I've got my serger set to one-to-one. -one. There's no differential. I don't want any of that. And so it doesn't really matter what's up and what's down. Anytime you're sewing a one-to-one, -one, it doesn't make a difference. It's going to change up here in a little bit because we're going to do a um, sleeve, and that makes a difference. Okay, so here I started surging the collar on. I'm going to make sure all my three layers are together. I've got two layers of the collar and one of the neck edge. 
Doesn't matter where you start, I'm literally going to start just kind of in the middle somewhere. Just so I, I really don't want to take out a pin. I don't want to start by taking out a pin. This is my shoulder and it's down below and that seam is to the back. So this is a, a great example of because I've got a pin in there and it's telling me which way that seam is going. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it and it'll be the right direction. And I think for me it just drives me nuts when my uh, seams are not going the right way. Even though they're inside, nobody sees them. That's just a me thing. All right, so all we're doing basically is stitching all the way around this circle. Now the one thing with ITYs is they slip a little bit. So sometimes you can easily get um, something to slip. I can't figure out where I'm at between the camera and there we go. There's my next pin. So remember, I had my four pins, and then I had my two shoulder pins. So I had six pins going all the way around this. Do it to your comfort level. But I have found that women have a tendency to just really, truly, I've seen it in workshops. I think they pin way too much. Pinning is kind of secure. So there's nothing wrong in doing it. Just be aware if you're over -pinning. And then try to figure out why, because it does take a long time to put them in. It takes a long time to take them out. You know, it slows down the process. All right, here I am to my next shoulder seam. And again, I already know which direction. I don't have to stop and look and say, hey, which way should the seam go? So that's kind of nice. That is pin number six that's come out. You can see I'm right back to my original place. And that's always kind of fun. So now you can see as I hold this up. Isn't that cute? And now is when you get time, you, you start to try it on. Or you can try it on. Here, I'll try it on. I love this collar. I just think it's so pretty. And I can't see anything on camera or anything, so but you can see that there's the shoulder seams. I can kind of feel that they're in place. And the bust starts, you can, you know, it's pretty. It's really pretty. If you were to make this top in a woven, would you simply adjust the armhole? Or what adjustment would you make? Yeah, that's on Tuesday night too. We did all the different style changes on Tuesday night. We went from woven, we went sleeveless, we did collar changes. All of that's on Tuesday night, and so you can watch all the style changes then, and then today we're just kind of sewing it to show you how it goes together. Is this the Naruto opening? Um, I would say no, because I don't know what Naruto is. Um, is this right sides together? Yes, it is. When you use fold over elastic on the neckline, how do you finish the ends of the elastic where they meet? I've done a YouTube on the fold over elastic, you guys. There's several ways to do that. So you can go to our Silhouette Pattern channel, our YouTube channel, and just in the search, once you get two Silhouette Patterns, do fold over elastic. Just search fold over elastic. And we've got some um, things in there where we've shown you how to do it, okay? Is there any other questions on that? The right shoulder on my top rides up next and the left shoulder rides off the shoulder. What's the fix for that? So the garment rests on your shoulder. So anytime there's mobility, it's either because you've got a rounded back and the garment's pulling back or simply that the angle of that shoulder isn't accurate. So it's either a rounded back or it's a shoulder angle most of the time. So you'll want to check those two things. Okay, this base, just in case you know, it is the same as the sweater set. So um, you can fit that and then do this, or you can do this and then do the sweater set, which either either way you want to go on that. Did you already s see what needle you're using? I'm using the same needle, 7010. Say I haven't changed needles, I don't know, since the first sew along. I don't think I've just the same needle. 
Is the collar of this if the collar of this pattern is a one to one, yes, but sometimes the collar is shorter than the neckline. Like you showed Tuesday, why is that? Uh, the collar is not shorter than the neckline. No, the collar. Not that I not that I'm aware of. You can show me an example, but the collar and the neck edge are usually a one to one. Okay. All right. Um, the camera is on the serger, the close up, and I want to leave it there because I want to do a. Um, I want to do the show the sleeves. Oh, I know what we could do. We could. I was going to do the. Um, I want to do the top stitch, the edge stitching right now. The bot that same column, that very bottom. Just I guess you don't need to see me do this on camera, but we're just I'm just going to do this right along the base. I'm only going to do an eighth of an inch. You don't really have to iron this because your serge seam uh, has a tendency to just keep it right in place. It's very simple to do. My, as you know, my Teflon foot, I use my Teflon foot on everything. It's got little toes on it. I guess that's what they're going to be called. And so I just keep my seam right on one of the toes and therefore my stitching is just straight all the time. Is the base for this pattern 195 and could we transfer the changes? Yes and yes. Happy Memorial Day, you guys. And the flags are at half mass this whole weekend for those who lost their lives in the COVID-19 fight, just FYI. The, um, the seam that I just sewed, which is sewing on the collar to the neck edge of the top, is what we're doing, and we're just edge stitching it to the top itself. All right, and I went all the way around, that's it. And it's perfect, and I love it, and we're all good. You're not going to really notice any difference. It just simply looks nice, I think. Okay. The pink top on Tuesday, did the did you serge the neckline? Then what are the dimensions for the curled collar? That's I did all that on Tuesday, you guys. It's all on Tuesday. Okay. Why did you add 3 inches to the sides? Why did the turtle cross the road? Cuz he wanted to get to the other side. Um, why did you add three inches? I wanted it longer. That's all. I just had measured a top that I like and I wanted this top longer and curved at the bottom. So I added it at the side and curved it at the bottom. I did three inches at the side, four inches in the middle because I wanted it to curve. And then I did three inches in the side of the back, but five inches in the center back. So that means it's going to cover a little more of my bum than it will my front. All right, are we okay? Is this a stretch needle or a knit needle? There's no such thing. I mean, <laughs> The needles don't stretch and the needles aren't knit. The needles are needles. Uh, it's just a 70-10. So 70-10, just a regular 70-10 needle. Okay, just a regular. How do you select the thread color? When you're doing it, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't read it all, sorry. How do you select the thread color when working with a fabric that is so multicolored? You know, that's a really good question and I don't think you have to so much worry about it. Let me, let's just show this to you. Um, you know, I did a white, and I did a white because there was white in there. And so if you look at this, you know, maybe we can get a close-up on there on what that thread color looks like. Are we? I can't see. That's okay. So see how close you're getting and you don't even see it yet? So see if you're getting that close, just kind of stand away. There you go. Now you can finally see it. Whoops, sorry. You can finally see it, but you can see that if you have to get that close and you, you're not on it and you can't see it, it, it doesn't matter. So uh, it doesn't really make a difference. You could have used blue. You, it just doesn't make a difference. I decided to go white on the serger because the inside was lighter. That's the only reason. And the inside, you know, there's the inside, the darts. But again, see, you don't even see it. 
And also for me, if there's any white on the garment, I'll use white as opposed to black because there's nothing worse to me than having white, black serger thread show through onto white. You're much better off to have white serger thread show onto black than the opposite. So there we go. Okay, are we good? You said Tuesday the collar of the turtleneck is shorter than the neck edge. The, the, in some cases, I didn't say in every case, I said in some cases. Why is it stretched and not just one to one like this top? Because you want it to, this portion right here of the neck is smaller than the base of the neck. So the shirt stops at the base, you want the collar to go around this portion, so you cut it for this portion, you stretch it to the base. So that's why it's not a one-to-one, -one, because you are expecting and relying on the fabric to literally fit both this section and this section and both in circumference, and you can't do that. The way you do it is to stretch one edge and non-stretch the other edge, okay? You, okay, you added three inches to the sides of the length. I thought you added to width. Sorry, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I added to the length. <laughs> Why did the turtle cross the road? Okay, because he wanted to get to the other side. Sometimes when we ask questions, we get answers, and that's why we ask them. And you guys know that this format, that's why I like it, because I get to answer your questions, and I feel like at the end, we can do this. We can sew the top, right? Okay, sometimes I'm on PBS, and I'm like, hello, anybody out there? Is anybody watching? But here, I at least know when you're asking questions that you're watching, so it's all good. Okay, on this shirt, um, for whatever reason, I just decided to do a little three-quarter sleeve. So when I start this, I'm going to serge it in. Well, actually, I could just serge. I, I always do the hems first, so I'm just going to serge the hem. And if you do it now, it's just easier. So we're going to do that. And I'm doing the bottom is what I'm doing, the bottom of the sleeve. Okay, so then what I do is I fold it in half, about to throw my scissors away, I fold it in half and just put a pin at the top. The front and the back of the knit sleeve is the same, unless you've, you know, made some alteration. Um, and if you have done that, that's no problem, but just put a little pin wherever your shoulder mark is. You want the sleeve to hang straight from the shoulder mark, um, and so you just need to mark that. It's like your dot is what it is. I don't have to mark mine because mine's the same in the front and the back, and so I don't mark it when I'm cutting out. I just fold it in half before I sew. And it's easy enough to mark when you're cutting out. You can just put a little clip up there at the top. Okay, so now we're gonna, so we've got our neckline done. We've got, again, I pinned that shoulder seam to the back so that when I, that's my, where my pin comes. And I don't have to worry about that being together. One note is though, I love this fabric. I think it's so very pretty. But when I was cutting out the front and the collar, if you notice, I did put them about the same place when I was cutting them out. I wanted it to kind of flow, that the collar itself if you notice, would be at about the same place as where the shirt was. It's not like it's matching plaids or anything. Just think about the coloration of the shirt going across. And I did the same with the sleeves. Again, just think about it. Don't get paranoid about it. Just kind of put it in your brain. Okay, so right sides together. Now we're going to go sleeve side down when we go to serge. And let's serge that sleeve in. I'm just going to line this up. I don't think there's really any point in a lot of you are, you know, really like to pin this. I don't think there's any advantage to pinning it. Um, if it's your very first time, I can see where you'd want to pin it. I've done sleeves a few times, so it's not a big deal. Kind of look ahead, I know you can't see me looking ahead, but kind of I'm putting my two pins together and just pulling this little area in between to make sure that they're going to come up. 
come together. Make sure your edges stay together. When you're doing sleeves and armholes, you're dealing with shapes that are completely opposite of each other. So be sure there. There I, I'm there together. Both my sleeve is right there. It's time to take the pins out. Okay, and just go around the cap. And then once you've gone around the cap and you know that your edges are together, kind of look ahead now and put the sleeve and the, the bodice together. And you can see that there. Make sure again your edges are even. Because they're different shapes, they'll have a tendency to want to pull away from each other. Just keep them the same. That is one sleeve. That was a spool of thread, which we will get later. All right, so let me show you where we are with that. There we have it. And we'll press that in a minute. Before we do the side seams, we'll press that, but let's go ahead and put the other sleeve in. Are we okay with questions? Fabric number, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I think sometimes you guys just give me a test. <laughs> it's 33.75, thank you guys in the back. <laughs> 3375, that's the fabric number. How about that? 3375. All right, 3375. So again, right sides together. I want to put the sleeve side down again, which means at one point you'll sew from the back to the front. At one point you'll sew from the front to the back because the sleeve is always going to be down and your opposite sides. Okay. If you move the shoulder seam forward, do you need to adjust the center of the sleeve? Absolutely. If you move the shoulder seam forward, yes, you have to adjust the sleeve. Yes. Yes. You guys know how to do that, right? Yes? That question makes me nervous. All right. Sleeve slide down. Keep your edges together. It's kind of like when you're skiing. Keep your tips together. When you're sewing, you're supposed to keep your edges together. I got Colorado and skiing on my brain. So you can see my two pins are just almost there. I'm going to reach in and take them away because we've gotten what we need to. And once I take my pins away, I'll just stay, stay with the sewing. Just, you know, don't worry about, just keep the edges even. Don't worry about easing that particular little section, maybe like an inch on both sides of the sleeve, and then go ahead and line up the rest. There we go. Okay, then you can kind of see that sometimes that fabric will curl. Just kind of uncurl it and continue sewing. You can feel with your finger, make sure there's nothing else going on in there. I can feel a ripple or a ridge or something. There we go. And when you've sewn it, double check to make sure you didn't sew under something or sew over something or just never know what we're sewing together here when we sit at the sewing machine <laughs> yeah that looks beautiful okay so we got two sleeves in okay uh, number three on the guide sheet still oh sorry number four <laughs> thank you all okay yeah let's look at the four uh, there it is we're at the bottom the top is just showing you if you did a sleeveless to finish that edge and then you can turn that edge under. The bottom is now showing you where the sleeve is underneath. You don't have to do it on a surgery, you could do it on a sewing machine. Um, it's just a matter of really getting confidence between yourself and the pattern. That's all it is. And I mean, I have literally had so many comments from so many people over the years saying those sleeves are amazing. They are, just if you've not tried it, sleeve side down, 3H and seam allowance makes all the difference. 
Sometimes it's been so long since I've realized what a big difference it is and that people are still doing it the other way, I forget. But you've only got a 3 h and seam allowance, the sleeve is down, and the machine is easing that in for you, okay? Here's another test. What is the material number for the top you have on? <laughs> um, it is, come on guys, how fast can you pull this up? <laughs> on the front page also, and it's uh, the one right below that, yep, that one. What is it? 3372. Three, three, I get an A. Yay. Okay, so I would not, you know, like with a collar, you can pull the seam underneath and you can top stitch it like I did, but I would not do, I would not ignore pressing on a sleeve. So we're going to go to the ironing board and we're going to, I've moved this also. It's so close, you guys. I really hardly even have to get up. But anyway, um, what you want to do is press the seams toward the blouse. So I'm going to do that. I use the end of my ironing board as kind of a little ham. And you want to do first to the wrong side. And then I think the real test is what I do is I take it like this and I pull it over the end of my board so the seams naturally go the direction they're supposed to. And then I just kind of sit on them for a minute. That's not literally. And they really stay nice. Give it just a minute to cool and they'll stay there. Okay, that looks great. And then same to the other side. I'm gonna press them toward the top. Again, you can kind of use the end of your board to really makes a big difference to kind of give them, get them the direction you want them to go. You really want to take the time to press the sleeve now because you definitely don't want to deal with this, you know, the seams later. If they're not pressed now, they'll, you know, they'll just give you a, they'll just not all go to the right way. So it's much easier to press them now and not have to deal with them again. Okay, see, and they're all done. They're pressed to the side they're supposed to be. Okay. Which stitch lines do you use on your serge seams? Um, this is at uh, 3.5. Can you show us how to change the sleeve if moved, if I moved shoulder forward? Um, I can't draw it because I don't have anything here, but you can, if, let's just say, you hear, hear me here, you've added to the back, so put, most people will add to the back, take away from the front. Okay, so then you're going to slash the sleeve from the cap Let's get the little sleeve here so we can see it. Here we go. I'll try to take the rest of this away. Okay, so there's your sleeve. You've moved the shoulder seam forward. You've added to the back and taken away from the front. You're going to slash, and you're going to slash in between the notch and the top, right in through here, and you're going to slash all the way to the bottom, and you're going to open that up the same amount that you've added to the back. You're going to slash in the front, and you'll close that up the same amount that you took off the front. It's very easy, very simple to do. Just whatever you added to the back, add to the sleeve in the back, in the back, whatever you added, but it makes the cap not even from front to back. And once you've done it, you should keep that sleeve and constantly reuse it. It's not like you have to do it every time you make a garment. You should have the same set of sleeves that you use over and over, okay? I wanna ask what pattern was that gorgeous light purple top you were wearing in Thursday PBS video? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But if you'll if you shoot me an email, I'm happy to answer. But I have no idea what Thursday was or what PBS was, or any of those other things. Where do I find info on adjusting the sleeve if the shoulder seam is moved forward? Just um, we have a video called "What's Up Your Sleeve," 
it'll be on there uh, fitting yourself by yourself anything sleeve related video it will be on okay the red top with the buttons looks so like the collar is wider guys this was Tuesday okay we already did this this is Tuesday today is Saturday we're only sewing go back to Tuesday okay <laughs> what kind of iron are you using um, it's a Rowenta it's a DG 8530 DG8320 something 8520 something like that it's the Rowenta steam iron do you use a knit needle no what does a knit needle do how does a needle know whether it's knit or woven you guys sometimes I know you've been taught this I'm so not making fun of you but they've they're funny aren't they like how does a needle know whether it's knit or not what you know it's like silly which direction did you press? I press the seam allowance into the body of the garment away from the sleeve. All right, and now we're gonna sew the sleeves. All right, so that means we go back to our serger. We're gonna put the bottom of the sleeves together and I'm serging, and, and we're at the fifth column, sorry. We're at the fifth column, <laughs> there you go. Okay, there you go. So you can see it while I'm doing it. It's a really good idea to have the columns, but you gotta be able to see them, huh? Right, and just match your edges. I think I missed that edge. I'll have to go back and correct it a little bit. When you get to the, um, this is the underarm seam, you want to make sure that they're matching. And so I just, I don't pin them, but I just kind of pay attention, if that's fair. And you're on the home stretch. You curl, curve and go down the side seam. And then kind of just as I've gotten past that, I look ahead. Just for length. section I don't feel like it really secured it closely I'm gonna go back and just the side see right there the fabric on the bottom kind of curled away from it that way that's much better so just watch that I saw it as it was happening but even if you don't see it as it's happening it's not a big deal you can always go back and fix it and then right now when I've done one side seam, I know that this side seam goes to the back because your side seams are pressed to the back. So I actually do the hem, it, I do the surgery. Certainly doesn't make it, you know, doesn't matter, but when, if you, ever you can sew it flat, you wanna sew it flat versus a circle. And also because ITYs, are so um, curly, it's easier to do it now also. So there's that seam, and I know that that seam goes toward the back because I started with the front. All right, that's a sleeve, that's a wrap. I got the other sleeve to go. Knit needles are normally a ball point tip. Um, if you guys find it, it makes a difference for you. I'm telling you, I've got the same needle in here that I've had for an extended period of time, and I find no difference. And you saw me sewing on a knit, and it didn't skip, it didn't do anything. That stitching is beautiful. I even did a close-up of it. So um, if it makes you happy, go for it, guys. Okay, look at you guys, it's actually almost a garment. Oh my goodness, this is the most fun. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. You start with a whole bunch of pieces and you end up with one. 
it's really really cool I like jigsaw puzzles too so we're just doing the same thing again we're gonna start we're gonna line up the sleeve the bottom of the sleeve this time aha see the bottom layer didn't get away from me I watched it they were trying they were being really tricky down there but I caught them ahead you're gonna there's my underarm seam and then as I round the you know the, I've already gone past the underarm seam I just look ahead to the hem obviously they should match and then I can align them kind of lay them down and go for it there's my first Goodness gracious, isn't this fun? Now we actually have two sleeves in my top. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I love it. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll do the hem. I don't know if you really want me to do the hem because we don't have a camera on this machine. See the bottom of that paragraph there is just doing the hems on the bottom of it and then the bottom of the sleeves. So when you're doing a hem on a sleeve, doesn't matter which way the seam allowance goes because it's gonna stay you know, on a serge seam anyway. All right, that's one. What's going on with the camera, Chica? Are we okay? Huh? It's okay. All right. All right. I feel like I want to put it on. It's so cute. It's so cute. Should I put it on? I want to put it on. No. <laughs> I made it for me, but I don't need to put it on. I just love it. I haven't ironed it. But you don't really need to iron it in the whole process. It'll, you know, it'll take care of itself. We'll do the hem real quick. My, my seams are surged where they go back. And because the hem is curved, I'm only doing a 3 8 do anymore if you're gonna do a curved hem you, you know if you try to do more it just doesn't doesn't really lay right so again I'm using these little markings on my foot Let's answer some questions. All right, you guys, it's not even three o'clock, so we made the top in an hour. Well, we talked half of the time, right? That was fun. Okay. That's that. 
I'm gonna iron this thing. I've got one more sleeve. I just want to finish it. Okay, you guys, sorry. <laughs> just got one more sleeve over here to finish. Any questions? Because I can answer questions. Do you have a suggestion for a pencil skirt pattern that goes with this top? Yeah, 2009. Or I would even do, you know what I've been thinking about doing is a jean skirt that matches. The 2000 and, uh, what's a jean skirt? I don't remember the number. 2017, that's what it is, sorry. Um, 2009 is a pencil skirt. Vera, it's called Vera skirt. Vera Wang, was that the one? That one I remember. I don't know why I don't remember Anne. I'll remember tonight and my dreams. <laughs> Okay, do you use a cover stitch machine for hems? I don't. I'm not sure why. I think to change it takes longer than to just do it. Um, if I had one more machine set up, I might do it. I mean, this is a cover stitch machine right here. Which is actually why I kept it. But, um... Yes, I don't know. It's just maybe I like to sew too much. Maybe that's my problem. We'll we'll press this bottom hem and then we'll put on a little mannequin for you. Okay, what is the length of the stitch you're using on the hems? 3.0 oh, on this fabric. I did 3.0. Oh. Are you using a straight stitch? Straight stitch. No slight zigzag, you guys. It looks crazy. It looks terrible. I'm sorry. If you like it, you do it. Hem stitch, cover stitch, won't straight stitch break? No. No, it stretches with the fabric. Okay. So you can feel the seam underneath here. It's the side seam because it hasn't been pressed yet. And I just push it to the back. little press all the way around. I always think steam is like a wonder thing. And again, I use the end of my board for my darts to kind of press the darts. The end of your board is kind of like a little ham. You know, but it doesn't roll around and you don't have to hold on to it. I really like my um, curved bottom. All right. I love this fabric. It's so pretty. The colors are just really, really pretty. Pinks, blues. It's really pretty. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, that's a mannequin. I can't do that. Here, we're going to undress this mannequin here for a second. And we're going to put this shirt on this mannequin so you can see it. I know we're just getting questions. Hang on. Look how cute this is. Oh my goodness. That's adorable. I love it. <laughs> you can wear it with a belt, without a belt, whatever you decide you want. Okay, what's the difference in one way, two way, and four way? Well, you must be asking that question because you realize how can you have a four-way stretch? You can't. It can only be stretched up and down and in and out. So the problem is, is that different people call it different names. So that's the problem. Um, but one way means it only stretches in one direction and two way means it stretches in both directions. Okay. On the red top with three buttons, you added length for the neck overlap, but did you make the collar taller as well? That's a Tuesday answer, you guys. Those answers are all on Tuesday. What number did you normally use for what number do you normally use for thicker material like jeans? 
What number? You mean like what weight? On the on the website? Four? Do you store ITY tops in a drawer or do you hang them? I hang them. I hang them. Why do you store them in a drawer? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. What other questions? Yay, we're done with our top. It's so cute. Remember who was the guy that was the puppeteer? He'd have a puppet right here and the puppet would talk. If my little mannequin would talk, it would say, I love my new top. Thank you, mommy, for making my new top. <laughs> it's so cute. I really, really like it. <laughs> but the mannequin can't talk, so that's out. That's out. I missed the beginning. Is there a pattern change to the neck? Looks deeper. No, no changes to the pattern, except I added length. I added three inches on the sides and curved the bottom. You can see that the bottom is curved and then you can see the back where it's a little bit longer, the back. Okay, but no changes. All right, so the top I have on um, is a, this is in the fabric. I thought this was really cool, this fabric. We said the fabric number, but I don't remember the fabric number. But um, oh, let's answer this question first. For sizes, if your bust is 38 and the Ann's top goes from 36 to 39, what should I use? Guys, so this is a personality question. I don't know you. I don't know what religion you are. I don't know if you're married or single or a stripper. You know, hey. <laughs> So how, you, how tight you like your knit tops is totally your call. You're, you have to be the one to decide. But if you look at the back on the directions, it says, these measurements, therefore we suggest you measure the circumference of several of your favorite tops. Okay, so read those directions, it'll help you. How about Sherry Lewis with Lamarcan? Yeah, that's what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, la, 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 la. <laughs> I just need a lamb head here is what I need. <laughs> but my little lamb is very happy with their new blouse. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Okay. We're good. You can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. That's always the motto. All right, you guys, it's a Memorial Day weekend. The goal is to sneak in some sewing. We've got some really exciting things planned for you in June. I'm very, very excited about them. We'll just give you that teaser. That's it. We won't tell you anymore, but just know that it's going to be fun. It's going to be really helpful for you, and I think we're really going to um, just make it fun. Okay? What's the best needles for jeans? Just so wet and the top looks beautiful what's the best name i use the same needle for everything i don't know how many times i'm going to say that <laughs> i use the same needle for everything i don't change that needle unless it breaks when it breaks i put in a new needle but then i use the same needle i don't change needles every time you change fabrics I personally think that's just something that's been sold to us by the needle manufacturers, okay? But you know, that's just an opinion and it's just mine. So if you swear by different needles and they work for you, go for it, it's no problem. That's the beauty about sewing. We all get to do it our own way. Even Sherry agrees. We all get to do it, our, my lamb, I mean, this is my lamb. I'm Sherry, sorry. All right, you guys, we'll see you. Um, this Saturday, Thursday night, we have a video for you. So we'll see you then. Until then, happy sewing and happy Memorial Day. Bye.